Hi, I'm Philip Dennis. Welcome to Big and Right TV, a show that will discuss the issues of America and the world in a politically incorrect manner, or in essence, we will just plain tell the truth. Osama bin Laden is finally dead, and virgins in paradise are not happy. Thousands of virgins are reported to be calling in sick to work since Osama bin Laden received a 40 caliber headache courtesy of the U.S. Navy SEALs. May peace and more 40 caliber bullets be upon them. From reports, it appears that there are some things virgins in paradise won't do, and that apparently is Osama bin Laden. Speaking of bin Laden, has there ever been a more incompetent administration in U.S. history? Yes, Jimmy Carter set the standard, but Obama, Biden, and their merry band of socialists are busy setting a new low. The White House comes out every day with a new version of what happened in the death of Osama bin Laden. Question, why discuss it at all? Joe Biden has already outed the SEALs as being responsible for the killing of Osama bin Laden. That's what happens when they let Biden out of his cage. Then we learned that bin Laden hid behind his wife. Or he didn't hide behind his wife. He had a gun. Then we find out he didn't have a gun. The administration watched the live feed. Then we found out they didn't watch the live feed. They ordered pepperoni pizza. They ordered Hawaiian. No one knows. It's like they're making this up as they go along, and it's making them look real bad. And why announce that we have found a treasure trove of intelligence on computers, DVDs, and jump drives? Let the terrorists worldwide discover the treasure trove of intelligence when the SEALs come double tap tapping at their door. Amazing how Obama can almost pull defeat from the mouth of victory in killing the world's most wanted terrorist, once he got off the golf links, of course. But President Obama is making a big mistake not releasing the photos of the dead terrorist. It's not as if he has a stellar reputation for releasing information. First, it shows a weakness to the savages of radical Islam. Terrorists wor worldwide should see what becomes of those who attack America and Americans. Those in Islam who supported bin Laden will dance in the streets again if America is hit with a major terrorist attack. Even today, worldwide, they are protesting America for killing the man who was responsible for the deaths of over 3,000 of our citizens. By not releasing the photos of Osama bin Laden, will that make them want to kill us any less? Will it make them want to stop protesting and calling for our destruction? Come on, it's time to stop pretending. And what about the families of the victims of Osama bin Laden on 9-12? What about them? Does anyone care? What about the rest of Americans who have waited for 10 years for this and want to see closure and having the satisfaction of knowing that true justice was finally brought to the world's most wanted terrorists? Americans are tired of our leaders putting the feelings of terrorists above the feelings and desires of Americans. Americans are tired of wussy pant senators like our, the feckless Lindsey Graham apologizing for our freedom of speech because it may offend those who are sworn to destroy us. Mr. President, it's time to get off the girl's bike, take off the mommy jeans, and throw a fast one across the plate instead of bouncing it twice in the dirt. America deserves and expects a lot more. Well, Jimmy Carter has once again raised his America and Israel-hating head. Carter has been a national embarrassment since his disastrous presidency and keeps digging a hole. His post-presidency years have been a hodgepodge of hugging and kissing terrorists and communist thugs all over the world while blaming America and Israel and our allies. Recently, on a peace mission to North Korea, Carter disparaged the United States and South Korea for cutting off free food for the starving millions living under the iron fist of Kim Jong-il. Mr. Carter, it is not America's nor South Korea's responsibility to feed North Korea. That responsibility lies squarely with its totalitarian madman dictator Kim Jong-il. Jong-il is content to sit back and let wusses like Carter do his bidding. In the past, Kim Jong-il would simply rattle his, sa his saber with a lot of empty threats and then wait for the West, led by weak American presidents, to come bearing gifts of food and energy. But last year is a little different. North Korea sunk a South Korean naval vessel and killed 46 South Korean sailors. It then threatened a nuclear attack on South Korea if they released a report proving that North Korea had indeed sunk the ship. Yet Carter continues to snuggle up to Kim Jong-il and has the audacity to criticize America and South Korea. Jimmy Carter has also never met a Muslim terrorist or terrorist group he doesn't like. His specialty is disparaging Israel. He recently praised the unification of two Palestinian terror groups, Fatah and Hamas. Carter said, If the United States and the international community support this effort, they can help Palestinian democracy 
and understand the basis for a unified Palestinian state in the West Bank in Gaza that can make a secure peace with Israel. However, if they remain aloof or undermine that agreement, it may lead to violence against Israel. Aloof indeed, Mr. Carter. I say it's time to stop pretending there will ever be peace in the Middle East. How many lives and how many billions of dollars that America has to borrow have been wasted on this ridiculous pipe dream? Yet every American administration pretends there is some magical roadmap to peace that will lead to an end of thousands of years of violence, especially when the two radical Muslim terrorist groups in question, Fatah and Hamas, have sworn to Israel's destruction and will not even recognize Israel's right to exist. That is a roadmap to nowhere. Yet nobody is happier than Jimmy Carter over the marriage of these two bloodthirsty terrorist groups. He hugs thugs like Hugo Chavez and Fidel Castro and wants to be taken seriously? Jimmy Carter has been a curse on America since his pathetic presidency and the, and the 30 years plus since. He is a national embarrassment. Carter is like the crazy uncle at the family reunion spouting lunacies but not having the good sense to shut up. Therefore, I am awarding Jimmy Carter the worst American in history award. He has tough competition, but for this award, his years of terrorizing America and aiding and abetting our enemies makes him the obvious winner or loser. Can't Jimmy Carter just hammer nails anymore, quietly? And finally, this week's Those Crazy Liberals piece. It appears the same animal-loving liberals who wanted to call fish sea kittens to keep children from eating fish are at it again. As for me, I love to eat some sea kittens. A report from Oxford University in the Journal for Animal Ethics says that domestic dogs, cats, and hamsters should be rebranded as companion animals, while owners should be known as human carers. Even wildlife or non-domesticated animals should be referred to as free living. Oxford professor Andrew Lindsay said, Despite its prevalence, pets is a surely derogatory term both of the animals concerned and their human carers. Again, the word owners, whilst technically correct in law, hawks back to a previous age when animals were regarded as just that property, machines, and things to use without moral constraint. We invite authors to use the words free living and free ranging or free roaming rather than wild animals. For most, wildness is synonymous with uncivilized, unrestrained, barbarous existence. There is an obvious prejudgment that should be avoided. Well, I would like to retort, Professor Lindsay. I submit that zebras in the wild would most likely call the lion that is chewing on their butt uncivilized, unrestrained, and barbarous. Perhaps Professor Lindsay has not considered that possibility, or perhaps Professor Lindsay is zebraphobic. Isn't Oxford where they're supposed to send smart people? Isn't that where they send Rhodes Scholars? Didn't Bubba Clinton graduate from Oxford? Well, perhaps I should feel cheated that my North Carolina State University education did not enlighten me to the plight of pets and sea kittens. But don't get me wrong, I like animals. But here's the thing about insulting animals and calling them pets. Animals don't speak English. I'm not sure about other languages, but I'm pretty sure no animal has perfected the English language. Also, I'm not aware of any animal inventing any useful technology or even taking out the trash. So I'm not gonna sweat too much about supposedly hurting my pet's feelings by calling them pets. It's like Gordon Gecko said in the movie uh, Wall Street about liberals. They love animals, they hate people. These PETA types will not stop until they have animals on equal moral and legal status as humans. So here's a question for Professor Lindsay of Oxford University. When animals have the same legal rights as humans, will lions be charged for murder for eating zebras? And shame on you, Professor Lindsay, for your zebra phobia. So that wraps up this week's Big and Right TV. We'll see you next time and with another episode. Until then, I'm Philip Dennis, and I'm big, and you know I'm right.